Hi, I'm Oliver Sharp. Welcome to Virginia Beach for the second annual AUVSI and ONR International ASV competition. Tensions mounted today as teams tried to qualify for tomorrow's final round. Let's get right into the action. Joined now by Daryl Davidson, the executive director of the AUVSI Foundation. And Daryl, we're here on the second day of competition. What do you think uh, of what you've seen so far? Well, it, it mirrors what we've seen with other competitions. Uh, the progress from one year to the next, especially in the early years, uh, is dramatic. I mean, that learning curve is very steep. And teams that have done this one year already have learned an immense amount of information that they bring back the second year. And even from uh, yesterday until today, we're seeing a lot of progress from the teams that were stuck in their tents yesterday trying to figure out why this thing wasn't working. Today they're in the water, now they're making some progress and seeing what happens from there. One of the common misconceptions just from spectators here on site, and I know probably for some viewers out there, is that these are remote controlled vehicles, which they are completely not. Can you just explain in layman's terms the autonomy of these vehicles? In, it's tough to put it in layman terms, but you said it yourself, these are not remote control. And so people see this boat leaving the dock and they think someone's controlling it. And then the very important thing to realize is that once it leaves the dock, everything that the boat does is determined by the boat itself. There's a computer on board, there are cameras and sensors on board that are all trying to sort of take in everything around it in the water and then make decisions according to how it's been programmed. Uh, that oftentimes doesn't work out so well, but it's not remote control. And after seeing the course, seeing the qualifications today, what are you expecting it's going to take to win tomorrow in the finals? I think it's going to take a team that does almost all of the elements of the mission. Uh, we've seen some teams that can do the first one or two, but I think somebody's going to probably run the first maybe three or four elements of the mission and get most of the way through the course. But that being said, our expectations are always thrown into jeopardy when we see a team that did very well in practice and then on competition day they show up and the battery dies or a circuit board dies. Things that you just don't expect are going to happen are going to happen. Anything can happen here with the ASV competitions. We're looking forward to a tight competition tomorrow in the finals. After struggling with their first qualifying run, the University of Toronto robotics team will look to improve the next time they take to the water. The team from Virginia Tech successfully completed the speed gates and will look to navigate the buoys in their second qualifying run. We had a lot of encouraging signs, um, still a lot of work left to do, but uh, the field's competitive and I think we have a great shot. Go, go. Embry-Riddle Aeronautical University had a solid morning run through the gates, cleared two buoys and avoided one obstacle. The <laughs> University of Rhode Island logged an impressive run through the speed gates and cleared three buoys. They will be back in the water early on day three. We had some troubles at first with the uh, vision system, but we decided to can the vision system and with dead reckoning and with the last eight minutes we managed to get through the speed gates and got three buoys so we're happy with that and our next run we can go for more. The University of Central Florida, last year's reigning champions, posted an impressive first run, successfully navigating the speed gates and eight buoys. We had somewhat of a motor malfunction last night about 1 a.m. and uh, we are actually only running with about half the thrust that we do normally so we, we're going to try to ramp up the speed a little bit. After spending a long sleepless night by the pool, the University of Michigan was able to get the Thundercat in the water but they were unable to complete a qualifying run. The vehicle from FAU, the only monohull design in the competition, cleared the speed gates, navigated four buoys and attacked a support boat. Jacket, eh? That doesn't earn points, but it was fun for the spectators. That'll do it for day two of competition here in Virginia Beach. Make sure to join us tomorrow at 2 p.m. for the live webcast of the finals.